Hey, shop huskies. What's up, shop huskies? What's up? What's up? You got shop huskies. Last time we spoke, uh, we were going to be doing, uh, we had just primed uh, the vehicle with epoxy primer and then we're going to do body work. This is a little out of sequence because I'm a little past that now, but we're, this video is going to be the body work that we did on the vehicle and then the next one we'll be putting it in final primer before paint and uh, unfortunately there was a hitch in that. So we'll get to that in the next episode. For this episode, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, we're trying to get to a thousand subscribers and we're uh, about 30 or so. I'm doing that to mark this episode. Um, and uh, uh, so let's get to some body work. So this is what I'm using to do the body work. Uh, first is our, my block. This is the only size block I have. I'm thinking about getting one of those block kits that comes with the, the dowel block and you know all that stuff. But for right now, this is what I've got. Um, I'm going to buy the rolls of the sticky back uh, 80, uh, 120, 220, and then I think I've got like a 300 grit as well, something in threes or fours. Um, cut it, stick it on, and it's good for blocking. Uh, I'm using sanding sponges. I love sanding sponges. They're cheap. You can buy them in big bags uh, at just about any auto parts store or Home Depot. Uh, and I use those for the rough shaping. Um, obviously a DA uh, works extremely well on flat panels to get uh, to get the shape right and then uh, my uh, my favorite tool is the Dremel and then I've got my box of various tips especially the cylinder sanders there where I can just replace the replace the ends with a small um, this one I believe is an 80 grit or a 60 grit um, for getting in all the, uh, for getting in all the the nooks and crannies um, that the body filler has gotten into that I need to shape it out of, but this thing works like magic to get things done. I'm also going to be using this to work the gap back in the tail light housing that's over there uh, that I filled with filler. It's primarily 80 grit that I'm using, 120 grit to just roughly shape things. I've got some 40 grit sponges that I'm using just to kind of shape uh, the get the high um, peaks off of some of this uh, body filler that I put in. Uh, plus the aluminum, the aluminum uh, infused body filler is extremely tough to sand. So that 40 grit and 80 grit works really good to kind of knock that down, uh, so that I can get to fine sanding. Um, and then uh, I'm going to finish with like a 400-ish grit uh, before I go back to epoxy prime. Uh, I've already scuffed almost all of the body, so I'm going to hit it one more time with epoxy to cover any of the body work that I did. Uh, and any of the seam sealer that I put down and then immediately going to do a 2k urethane uh, primer from Eastwood uh, on the body as well. I'm going to do two coats. Uh, I'm going to sand off the first coat and uh, I think for the most part that's going to get any of the rest of the body uh, issues. I'm going to do a guide coat, hit it with sander, make sure that there's no uh, dents that I can't see uh, either from manufacturing or shipping or me moving it or whatever. Uh, and then and then we're gonna go right into paint and just to show you a few areas that so this was my this is my biggest concern right here is um, the whole door jam area because I had to put the upper and lower rockers together um, I had to trim those because they weren't the right they were too wide uh, and they stuck out from the body too much so I had to trim and cut and push and weld and and so I wanted to uh, kind of fill in some of that spot welding and stuff. And you can see I went ahead and I basically just filled in the sill here and right around the top. And then I'm going to sand most of this off. I've already started, but it's very hard work with this aluminum infused uh, filler. Um, and then right up the side here, and you can see I got most of that uh, rounded off and filled in. So. Uh, and that's all aluminum filled compound, so that's going to be pretty darn tough. Uh, I can tell you it is going to be pretty darn tough. And then the seam here I filled also and I sanded this off and so we got it nice and smooth. Uh, you're not going to be able to see, I still have a little bit to do there, but you're not going to be able to see in there. Um, and that's the way I want it, so I'm going to keep it that way. 
And then as we go down here, my biggest consternation was, you know, how am I gonna recreate this seam in here without having to be just as white as it was before? Um, so what I did was, I have that bit right there, it's a stone bit for my Dremel. And uh, what I'm doing is, um, instead of going in the middle of the gap, I'm actually pushing it all the way over to the taillight housing in there. And I'm riding the edge along that taillight housing to keep it nice and straight. And then, uh, and then I'm gonna go in there and uh, sand it down. So the gap will look more like it's an extension of this panel with the gap right before this. So my intention is, is that it's gonna look good when I get it done. Uh, we'll see. I guess if I go too far or to one side or the other, I can always put more filler in there, but um, but that, that was my plan on that. Before we put the uh, urethane primer on, we're gonna guide coat this. And to guide coat it, you can get a powder guide coat, uh, which is basically powder that goes on here, or even a spray, and then guide coat it off. But we're just gonna use some satin black and do a real fine mist over the top. We're gonna let that dry uh, for about uh, 15 minutes and then we're just gonna do a light blocking just to uncover some issues that we can deal with. Put a little bit of pot, uh, filler in it. I don't think we're gonna need much. We're gonna be running a 45 degree contact pattern back and forth. I already have a big one right there. Found some high spots here which have to be hammered down. Some low spots here, 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 here. Uh, another high spot here, high spot, high spot, high spot. It looks like someone was underneath this thing just hammering and I got a bunch of little pinpoint high spots there. So I'm gonna go one at a time, knock those high spots down, uh, fit, put filler in the areas that need. I've got a super high spot right there. I don't know what I'm gonna do with that yet, but I think I'll probably fill in here because this is all low and this is all low. So that actually may blend that in. That, that's why there's so much filler on this hood. This area here, 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 and here is all low compared to the rest of the hoods. Right now it's 60 degrees and at night it drops to 25 and we get our first snow of the year. We're expecting uh, two to three inches uh, that evening. Um, we usually get a, uh, it snows and then we think, hey, ski season's coming and all the resorts go crazy making snow and uh, all the us, you know, winter um, enthusiasts uh, start rejoicing. Uh, and then at the end of October, we have two weeks of 80 degree weather, which melts all that snow gets our daubers down and uh, um, uh, and then the ski season starts normally after that in November. Uh, so normally I don't want that to happen, but this year I'm betting on it because I've got to get this thing in the paint. So that's where we're going with it. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And uh, we are going to get this thing rolling. I promise you and I promise me that I'm doing everything I can to get this thing painted so that we can spend the winter building it the way that we want to build it. Uh, other than that, that's a wrap for my point three garage. I will see you very soon putting this truck in your thing primer.